share with you how we're going to keep driving the technology roadmap forward, enabling more new types of devices and new types of device capability. It's never been more exciting to be in technology development. It's all about innovation. The days of buying a new lithography tool, shrinking everything, and maybe sprinkling in a little innovation are gone. And, and as a result of those changes, you get better performance and better power. Now scaling actually results in performance degradation, which you have to then recover with a lot of innovation. So you'll see in my talk, it's all about materials innovation to keep driving the roadmap forward. It's also all my substrates, which reduces the parasitic capacitance of the transistor and results in improved power and performance. Strain silicon. Now this is putting material onto the wafer that strains the silicon substrate and actually modifies the speed at which carriers move uh, in the silicon substrate, thus enhancing the performance. Uh, Multi-core uh, processors, increasing the processing power and power performance of a microprocessor. Immersion lithography, which was a breakthrough that came in 45 nanometer, which is the introduction of a water film between the lens and the wafer. And this allowed us to continue to be able to scale uh, technology to 45 and 32 nanometer. IK metal gate, one of the key challenges that we faced in the technology is the gate oxide or gate dielectric had reached at the 90 nanometer node about three atomic layers and we couldn't scale it anymore. Uh, the introduction of high K dielectric material has allowed us to thicken up the gate dielectric and continue that scaling. Uh, SOIE DRAM, we introduced that in our 45 nanometer SOI high performance technology. And this brings significant amount of memory onto the same chip as the microprocessor, addressing the bandwidth issue uh, that microprocessors are facing today. And we have as much as close to 100 gigabytes of memory on a single uh, microprocessor. And then the next technology is coming, 3D chip stacking, which again help address the memory bandwidth issue by being able to stack chips vertically on top of each other. And then in the future, nanotechnology, things like carbon uh, nanotube integrated circuits. And we do that in our IBM Eads Fishco facility. And then finally, we transfer it into manufacturing in partnership with Samsung and Global Foundries. And we have a fab synchronization process that allows us to bring up the technology at the same location, at different locations, achieving the same uh, results on product IP. And I'll show you examples of ARM IP, which we have prototyped and developed on our 32 and 28 nanometer technology, which is being manufactured now in our, in our partner fabs, such as Samsung and Google Foundries. So as I mentioned, it's a long-term investment in advanced R&D. Uh, we have significantly stepped up our investment in that early advanced technology space. And you can see the growth of our Albany Nanotech Center, which is a fully functional 300 millimeter advanced technology line for doing advanced research on 20 nanometer, now 14 nanometer, and beyond. As I mentioned, it's in partnership with New York State, with the SUNY Albany uh, group, and with leading semiconductor partners, and Semitech has located their headquarters there. Our aperture. At 3228, the immersion technology was enhanced with an even better numerical aperture, but at 2220, there is not a, a new lens, not a new or higher NA tool available. So we had gone to something called source mask optimization, which we'll talk about in a moment. At 14, it will be unavoidable to do, go to double edge, uh, double patterning. Uh, but then key is the introduction of EUV, uh, maybe even as early as 14. So if we look at how we've enabled uh, lower K1 factors at 3228. Of course, we had uh, better NA tools with the immersion technology. And we employed correction elements to the mask to ensure that we were able to resolve the features. In the top row, you can see the mask design on the left, the mask in the middle, which has the correction features at, at various corners, resulting in the shapes that the designer wanted on the wafer. At 22 and 20, there's really only two techniques. The use of double edge, double expose type techniques, which is shown in the middle row, or what we call source mask optimization. Source mask optimization is where we relax the, the restrictions on the light source. We actually go to a light source which is not a fixed light source, but which is pixelated and programmable. So we can actually program in any pattern of light configuration in the lens. 
And then by using mathematical computational techniques, you can actually co-optimize the light pattern that you want to use and the mask. And if you look here in this example, the mask looks nothing like uh, what's, on the what's in the designer's concept. But at the end of the day, when you go through the subtleties of, of, of uh, light optics, you end up with a pattern that you're looking for from a design perspective. In both cases, uh, they require through silicon bias. In the case of true 3D, you're talking about very high aspect ratio uh, through silicon bias. But in both cases, there's other technology elements that need to be developed to make 3D work. In the case of silicon interposers, chip stacking, flip chip packaging. And in the case of 3D integration, uh, it, you have to align the layers, and you have to be able to bond and contact them. So in summary, the roadmap really has three key thrusts. The first is continuing to extend conventional silicon CMOS, high key metal gate, strain layers, as I talked about, advancing interconnects, the use of advanced computational techniques such as source mask optimization to extend the lithography roadmap, and then eventually to 3D or fully depleted type of devices such as FinFets or ETSY.